In this video, I want to debunk the common misconception that diminishing marginal utility is why a demand curve slopes downward. Say I go out to have a drink. Uh, that first drink tastes great. The next one tastes good, but not as, as good as the first one. So on and so forth until I'm passed out in the gutter. The last one, that gave me very, very little utility. And so, the, uh, it works for all sorts of different goods. You can think about it with peanut butter, with peanuts, with, uh, with all sorts of things. And so this is the motivation that people often give. They say your willingness to pay decreases, and your willingness to pay, well, that just must be related to this notion of marginal utility. So here we have three indifference curves on a preference map of bundles of X and Y for a consumer. These are indifference curves of the usual shape, they are convex to the origin, they are downward sloping, and they, they have the property that as we increase the amount of X that this consumer has in his bundle, the slope gets flatter. Now that's the concept of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. And as you may remember, marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of marginal utilities. Notice that what we have here on our indifference curve map is indifference curves such that our marginal rate of substitution is diminishing. But I didn't say anything about the labels on these indifference curves. For example, let's consider three points. Point A, point B, and point C. Now, I want to know, perhaps, what is the marginal utility of X well, at point A, or going from point A to point B. What I need to know for this is I need to know what are the labels on these indifference curves. So, for example, this might be utility equal to 1. This would be utility equal to 2. And that would tell me all I would need to know to determine the marginal utility of going from uh, of of good x at bundle A. If I have one more unit of x, this individual will get one more util, and so the marginal utility at bundle A, well, that's just one for this consumer. So now, what do we need to do to establish diminishing marginal utility? Well, it turns out that what we need to do is say, well, what if we add another x? Fortunately, we have three indifference curves. So if we add another x, does this label here on this indifference curve have to be bigger than 3 or smaller than 3? If it's something like 2.5, then what we would have is that the marginal utility of x at bundle B, that would be 2.5 minus 2, that would be 0.5, and indeed in this example we have diminishing marginal utility. But notice that this doesn't have to be the case. Remember, these are just ways of ordering the bundles on, uh, on these, this indifference curve map. These indifference curves have uh, their labels actually have no content for actual behavior. Because if this indifference curve is here, it tells me precisely how to rate bundle C relative to every other bundle on this indifference curve map. No, namely, if it's above and to the right, those bundles are preferred to C. If it's on the indifference curve, those are just as good. And if it's below, it's, those bundles aren't as good as bundle C. And so, that's all we really need to know. And all we need is to have these indifference curves shaped this way. Now what if, instead of this being 2.5, this was 3.5? Well, if it's 3.5, then what ended up happening here is that our marginal utility is now, instead of 0.5, it's now 1.5 between bundle B and bundle C. And so as we increased x from 1 to 2, the marginal utility was 1. But as we, increased marginal, uh, as we increased x from 2 to 3, the marginal utility was even bigger. It was 
Notice that that is increasing marginal utility. Yet, that's consistent with diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Now that's because it has to be the case that in this ratio of marginal utilities, well, both of these would be increasing to get this diminishing marginal rate of substitution. So here is a really simple utility function that has this property. There's nothing really too special about this utility function. It's actually very, uh, it gives the same preferences as a uh, Cobb-Douglas with equal shares. Now notice that when we take the partial derivative with respect to x, that gives us some marginal utility as a function of x. So we can go ahead and take the der partial derivative with respect to x, and we get 2xy squared. Now what happens if I increase x in this? Well, the marginal utility, well, this is just going to be increasing in x. Now, let's go ahead and get the other component to this formula here. We take the partial derivative with respect to y. We'll see that it's also, we also get increasing marginal utility in y because we have the uh, it's 2y x squared and so in both y and x we have increasing marginal utility as I increase y as I increase x I get increasing marginal utility well, let's go ahead and take the uh, ratio between these two between 2x y squared that's ux that's going to be equal to 2y x squared. We can do some cancellations. And what we'll end up with is y over x. Now that is our marginal rate of substitution. And assuredly, this is decreasing in x. As I increase x, I increase the denominator. And as you increase the denominator, that declines. When you're telling that story, what you're really thinking about is how much of other goods you'd be willing to give up for that first sip of beer. In this case, this is the right answer. This is the right formula to think about. Because remember, marginal rate of substitution tells you how much y you're willing to give up for a little bit more x. Marginal utility tells you, if I have one more x, how much higher is my utility function. And so as this example has shown, diminishing marginal utility is neither necessary nor sufficient for a downward sloping demand curve. As you can see, we have a diminishing marginal rate of substitution and that is important for a downward sloping demand curve because this is a condition that goes into our demand along with the budget constraint. But you can see that when we take these ratios of marginal utilities, we can get increasing marginal utility and there would be no problem in getting a downward sloping demand.